Greetings shippers and general fandom members, and today we're going to be taking a look at something a little different. As an avid member of many different aspects of fandom culture and a content creator, nothing interests me more than how fandom is depicted in the media. And I'm not necessarily talking about academic texts, although that is interesting too and is really on the rise, fandom studies that is, but particularly in fictional portrayals. Now is a very interesting time for these portrayals because fandom is slowly starting to become more accepted, at least some parts of it. While the fans come from the root word fanatic mentality is still very much in place in some circles, there is nuance beginning to be interjected into this discussion. With that in mind, I have decided to review a series of books about fandom. We've actually started this a while back when we reviewed Fangirl and Carry On, both by Rainbow Rowell. So if you missed either of those, please check them out. I will of course have cards or the link will be down below. The book in question is Internet Famous by Danica Stone. So we're going to take a look and examine how this book handles online culture, particularly how it feels to be internet famous. As always, follow on social media to stay up to date, and of course, chat about fandom and all kinds of other things. So, without further ado, let's talk about Internet Famous. Internet Famous was published in 2017 by Swoon Reads, an intriguing publishing house that allows readers to sign up and be part of the manuscript selection process, which leads to an interesting array of books being published, some about topics you may not have seen otherwise, as is potentially the case with this novel here. Internet Famous is the tale of Madison Nakama, or Maddie for short, an avid member of fandom who has her own very popular rewatch blog that has skyrocketed her to a moderate level of internet fame. She uses her fandom as an escape from her various family troubles, as a means of social interaction, and also as a means of employment. A responsible girl, Maddie is dutiful and attentive to her family, taking care of her autistic sister and maintaining her routine and often putting her family's needs above her own, although she can be quite critical of them, though her views slowly morph as the novel progresses and she comes of age. Maddie has everything settled into a nice routine and even has a burgeoning romance. When the emergency of an online troll who develops into a full-blown harasser derails not only her cyber life, but her corporeal one as well. Internet Famous is an interesting read for anyone involved in fan culture, but it's also a good entry point for those who are not. For example, the book includes a glossary of terms at the front, and while some may nitpick how they are employed within the text, they are clearly defined. The work explores the importance fandom can play in an individual's life, as well as how intertwined most people's, especially young people's lives, have become with the internet. And it does not pass a value judgment on that, instead introducing a scenario that is not often dealt with. Cyberbullying. The novel delivers its message through a traditional narrative, that is, part first-time romance and part mystery thriller, although the publicists seem to be banking on the idea that the romance is the more intriguing part for its target demographic. As the tagline for the novel reads, Can online romance survive real life? Miles will vary on both plots, but we'll dive a bit more into that later. On the note of formatting, this novel does include large segments that are told via text, and the text is formatted as such within the novel. And there are even pictures that appear, so for those who perform more traditional format, that may be a turn-off. But for those who like to be immersed and see authors try to bring in that text-based communication in some fashion, it can be more immersive. With all of that aside, it's time to dive into some of the deeper questions that this novel brings up. Okay, so for this section, it is definitely the time to get out now if you haven't read this book and if you're interested on in reading it, because I'm going to discuss how it actually really impacted me reading it, as well as some of the things that you might take away from it, so there may be some spoilers in this section. Firstly, it must be noted that there are many different ways to take this book, and that is simply reading it for the narrative that it provides provides, and then also diving deeper. And by diving deeper, I mean that the book can actually make you ask some very interesting questions, though not necessarily intentionally, meaning that the book has its narrative laid out, and the way that the main character Maddie feels about things is very clear. Not obnoxiously clear, she's not pushing an agenda or anything like that, she just has her viewpoints on the internet and how it works, and how she feels that her harassment is affecting her and what needs to be done about it. But at the same time, as someone who consumes fandom or creates, especially there are many questions that one can end up asking, and the book can end up being much more thoughtful than potentially it was intended to be, meaning that there are lots of things to explore. So it has a lot to offer for the different levels. For example, if you're new to fandom and people creating, say, extra fandom transformative material such as blogs, reviews, anything like that, this can be a bit of a window into that world and seeing why somebody would like it and what would draw other people to it. If one is a fan, it can be a glimpse into how fan interactions can impact upon a creator. And 
And as a creator, it can make one ask a lot of questions about how they feel about their quote unquote internet fame. Maddie has to deal with all kinds of things, such as the idea that she's potentially oversharing, something that she's never thought of up until that point, because with the internet being such a key part of her life and so prevalent, it's not something that she ever had to worry about. However, the internet changes when one is creating on it. It goes from just this space where one is interacting to a place where all of a sudden there are all of these additional responsibilities and expectations, and people will come to view you differently. The book is an interesting study on how even though that begins to happen for others, it doesn't always actually happen for yourself, the person creating. It also dives into fans, how to deal with fans, that experience, especially as someone who might not view themselves as particularly in a position to be having to do that. It deals very much with that navigation and not really understanding where to place oneself. It also dives very much into fear of one's fans, which is interesting and something that a lot of creators don't feel comfortable talking about, no matter what level it's on because of fear of backlash. So this can be a space to see something talked about that really isn't that discussed. For example, it deals with interactions where she's dealing with certain fans where she knows that she has to tread very carefully or that it could potentially go very, very wrong. So it's interesting to see that examination as this space as this fun, interesting place, but then at the same time as this potentially dangerous space. The book doesn't really deal with everything though. For example, it never really deals with the idea that maybe Maddie has some different responsibilities for her space because she is is now earning off of it versus just doing it for fun. But again, none of this is the book's focus. The book's focus is very much on Maddie's coming of age, her newfound romance, which mileage will definitely vary. If you're not here for teeny boppy romance, then probably won't like it very much. However, it is nice to see an online interaction that doesn't end with the moral and then they were an axe murderer. So it has that going for it, for sure. Also, that romance is very much meant to be a counterpoint to what's happening in her online world. Which brings me to, I think, the part of the book that I had the hardest time with and I'm not sure how I felt about. That being the online harassment section. So Maddie ends up being harassed by a super troll on her blog who ends up also transitioning into her real life and doing some very real damage in her personal and scholarly and professional life, really. So on the one hand, it's very interesting to see this topic being fictionalized and not in an over the top PSA type of way, just in the sense as it's something that happens, it's happened to her before off panel or rather off script. So it's something that's in this world and it's happening to her again. However, miles will vary based on how much online harassment you've experienced, witnessed, and how you feel about it. Now the book can be a really good introduction to someone who may not think that online harassment is that serious because it very much captures that dread and the just your stomach dropping out when you log online, turning this space that's supposed to be fun and that anybody can use into just this really stressful, awful experience, which is something that it does, I think, capture. However, there's some, for me at least, there's some issues with how they utilize the terminology, particularly the word troll, because they just simply make troll equal harasser, so all trolls are treated unilaterally the same by Maddie, which means that a comment such as, your blog's boring and you suck will be treated with the same severity as I'm coming for you, bleep, 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 die in a fire. So it's interesting and it can make one think about how we deal with trolling slash harassing in society and whether we need some better terminology to define these things a little bit more accurately as they can be very different and also as the responsibility of someone in a space to accept criticism, especially if they are now being paid. Basically how much criticism should one have to leave up, if any, and that is very much a discussion that people are still having. So it can be something that this book brings to the fore, although it might not, depending upon how you feel, you might just have a she's wrong or she's right reaction to it, but it definitely made me think about that, especially because, and here's where the spoiler aspect comes in. What really got to me was that the troll ended up being someone that Maddie knew personally, who had a personal vendetta against her. Now this works and doesn't work. 
for me at least. It works because it makes the narrative very cohesive. It turns it into a mystery, almost cyber thriller. Who is doing this to Maddie? Why? What can she do to stop them? How are we going to find out who this troll is? And then it dives into going into the online community and IPNs and how to protect yourself and all of that. But at the same time, I wonder if that doesn't fully capture the full terror of cyberbullying and especially being harassed on your work site or your workspace because it could be anybody. And the idea that somebody that you don't know could do so much damage would I think have gone a lot further into diving into why this is something that needs to be taken so seriously and why people are so concerned about it and also really bring home that discussion that Maddie starts to kind of have with herself about oversharing and how much you should make public and how much you need to protect yourself. But with the troll being someone that she knows that is very much negated because it brings it back into a realm that I think is more understandable for a lot of people because it equates it very much with stalking or physical stalking of a celebrity, which can be a good thing because it can be a way for people to begin to grasp the concept for those who don't really understand why it's such a big deal. But at the same time, it does fail to really bring out that true terror for those who are already familiar with it, which a lot of people who are picking up a book called Internet Famous most likely are. But in short, after all of that, I would have to say that I definitely would recommend it because as you can see, for me at least, it definitely raised a lot of questions and had a lot to say. And that's just me diving into the creator side of it. It also had a lot to say about fans and fan and the community aspects of it too, people coming together and how this can be a really great space where people meet up in the real world and form real friendships and how it's a place for misfits, normies, everybody to kind of come together and enjoy these certain things and how people can create these interesting meta fandom spaces where they themselves become internet famous as the title says. So if you're interested in seeing a book that talks about something that maybe you're involved in or just seeing a take on it, then this is definitely something worth picking up. And it does do the courtesy of acknowledging that Maddie is going to continue her fandom into adulthood, which even though the book is very much YA based, which is fine, although it does make some of the problems a bit less relatable for some readers, it does at least acknowledge that you can carry it into adulthood, which is good because especially with so many people in fandom aging up, up and staying involved. It is nice to see the acknowledgement, although it would be nice also in the future to see whole books about adult fans in fandom. Yes. <laughs> I'm waiting. So in terms of picking it up, it is a quick read, especially if you're a quick reader, and because it has all of the text-based formatting and the messaging in it, it is actually faster and shorter than it appears, so it's not going to take too much time. And even if you are a slower reader, it is still a very manageable book and has very clear places where you can stop and pick it back up, and it's not going to be the kind of thing where you're going to have to flip back and be like, okay, who was this? What was happening? It's easy to follow, basically. If you're looking for something that's going to go very, very deep, a deep dive, this is definitely not it, but it does touch upon a lot of topics that you don't see touched upon, not just in fandom in terms of family dynamics, dealing with autism and all of that kind of stuff. So that does make it a very interesting read. So if you have the time and you're so inclined and you were looking for a book like this, then this is definitely one to check out. And if you have checked it out or if you're going to and then you've come back, please let me know how you feel about it down below. I need to know. I'm not going to do all of these book reviews like this, at least I don't think so, unless you guys really like it. But this one was just, it was very interesting to me, especially because of how it dove into those creator aspects, which really isn't something that you see handled very gracefully all that much. This wasn't the best handling in the text itself, but it did, as I said, raise those meta questions if you wanted to kind of pause and take a step back and look at them which I always do. So thank you so much for joining us on our fandom journey as we continue to dive into these fandom books and we are definitely going to keep going. It's going to be very interesting. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already because we have all kinds of very interesting videos coming up soon on a wide array of topics. So as always, I appreciate you taking some time out of your day to spend it here talking about fandom with me. And now let's get the outro. Bye bye This has been Shipper's Guide to the Galaxy. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and hit that bell so that you never miss another video. As always, I have to give special thanks to all of my patrons, names on the side, who help not only determine content, but make all of these videos possible. As always, please stay tuned for various many ships out there as there are stars in the sky.